Hey everyone, welcome to episode two of Quartermaster Taxes podcast. Uh, podcast, excuse me. <laughs> I'm here with Don, uh, partner, and uh, we're going to talk today about some 2022 update. Excuse me, 2022, 2023 R and D updates. Uh, some things that's going on on the Senate floor, just about processing different things like that. So uh, let's go ahead and dive into it. Well, we've got some good news. Uh, of course, we are watching this very, very closely because we want to keep you in the know. And, and part of that is, is that, as I've mentioned uh, numerous times, if you've uh, been getting our emails, is that uh, the uh, House of Representatives passed this bill, and I'll let you kind of go through the name of it here in a second, 357 <laughs> to 70. And a good friend of mine who's a congressman there said that it was unprecedented that how well it went. Of course, you're always going to have some naysayers and some who don't like some things in it, yeah. and that's just you know, it comes with anything. I don't believe there's anything that's been passed, you know, unanimously, like 500 to none. So, but, um, so talk a little bit about the, the whole uh, act, first of all, the tax uh, legislation. Absolutely. So um, when the House passed it, it's actually, um, it was the uh, best or highest voted bipartisan bill in like, or bill in like 25 years. I know. So, I mean, it's got bipartisan support. Both both sides of the floor are wanting this thing to pass. They know how much how important it is to both American businesses and families to pass this mm -hmm. uh, bill. But the uh, the tax bill itself has a pretty lengthy name to it. It's the uh, Tax Relief for American Families and Workers Act. So that is a mouthful as far yeah, as say that, that goes. Ten times. Yeah, exactly. So the, you know, inside the bill, essentially, what's going to happen is is the family is going to get a child tax incentive in this, and then also it has our um, coveted R and D changes to reverse the amateurs schedule that was set in place in the 2017 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act um, and reverse that so that you can begin filing, uh, you know, taking your full deductions, things like that up front and not having to take your deductions over a five-year period. Correct. Yeah. So, so just to remind you, so under the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act that Ryan was talking about, at the end of 21, uh, in December 21, actually the House had this opportunity and everyone, I mean, all of the Fortune 500 companies and uh, small business organizations, AICPA, everybody really expected this to get passed in December of 21, and it didn't happen. Believe it or not, there's bipartisan bickering that goes on, and that's what happened, Ryan, just like it happens um, you know, in families and organizations, but most importantly in Washington, D.C., they just can't have a consensus. So this big vote that you just talked about, mm -hmm. 357 to 70, was unprecedented. So... Uh, but the big sticking point uh, was the child tax credit back in December of 21. And so they made some resolutions in here. So um, uh, Jason Smith from the House Ways and Means Committee, who's the head of that on the House side, and also Ron Wyden from the Senate, came together to create this legislation. And so when they did that, and I don't really understand why they didn't have uh, Mike Crapo from mm -hmm. Idaho, the senator who's the GOP head of the Finance Committee, a part of these conversations, so we wouldn't be having this conversation today. But they didn't, evidently. And one of his sticking points, and why it's sitting over in the Senate, is because they're under this child tax credit, they, uh, Senator Crapo, uh, feels very... Uh, adamant that it's going to create an environment that people wouldn't want to work hmm. because you're going to get this credit. So it's all based upon what tax bracket you are in will determine how much of that credit you get. Okay. And so it's going to be based upon the previous year's tax return. And so that's his sticking point. But based upon some information we just got today, uh, I beg your pardon, it was yesterday, that they are working on a solution here. And hopefully the solution uh, is that Senator Crapo would be satisfied with um, whatever they come to a consensus on and that it doesn't have to go back to the House for a vote. But even if it does, even if they have to make the correction, with that unprecedented vote they just had about a month or so ago, we feel very comfortable it will still pass because it's still getting the child tax credit out. That's the big sticking point. The things we'll talk about from a business perspective, uh, there's no issues with that. And so the big thing is, and that's the research and development tax credit, that's number one. And number two is the accelerated depreciation for purchasing equipment for your business. So in, at, again, at the end of 21, uh, the, the ability for me to buy of a piece of equipment, so if I bought a new copier or something else for our business, you know, a new TV, uh, I could take 100% deduction in that year. Well, what happened is when that, that uh, expired, so what happened last year in 23, you got to use 80% of your purchase. 
this year, it drops down to 60%. So a lot of people would probably agree with this, Ryan, and maybe you have some thoughts about this, you know, whether our economic situation is real strong right now or maybe not so strong. Yeah. So... Absolutely. Um, well, yeah, everybody knows, you know, we're, we're in uh, unprecedented times right now and everybody's straining. And uh, when things like this happen, it can really put a wrench into running a business. As you know, as other people know, uh, when you can't take those needed deductions, you can't take those, um, it can affect things, everything from hiring to getting new things into your business. And, you know, uh, one of the things that uh, it kind of gets overlooked is from a global scale, we're already way behind right. uh, other countries like China as far as R&D goes, things like that. And when companies cannot reinvest that back into their business, there's no incentive for them to grow, essentially, mm -hmm. um, or it delays the incentive to grow. And uh, this bill is just hindering American progression and staying competitive on a global scale. That's a absolutely a fact. And that's the thing about it is, you know, when we think of our small business owners out there, there are some who compete against China and some of these other countries that give substantial research and development benefits. But for these large corporations, and this is the thing we had a conversation earlier, Ryan, is that these Fortune 500 companies were very, very upset because I'll give you a prime example. So we have a, a referral client up in Virginia, and they provide uh, 911 service for their area. So they went out and purchased uh, and invested into some software. Software cost them a million dollars, okay? Wow. So, and my conversation with them was, was last year. He said, my accountant just called me and told me I'm going to have to pay $300,000 in taxes. And he says, I don't have the money. Mm. Because what he did, he bought that million dollars. And the, under this uh, five-year amortization, the first year, you only can take a 10% uh, de uh, deduction for the expenses. So that million dollars, he was only able to deduct 100000 so he had to show $900,000 of income that he didn't have. That he didn't have. Yeah. yeah. Oh my so with, the, with Virginia yeah. and the federal government, he is now paying $300,000 in taxes. Mm -hmm. I actually got, had an opportunity to get on a recording and send it to my buddy who's a congressman uh, so he could take that and show it to the rest of the Congress up there uh, that this is, this is small business owners. This is not you know, your Fortune 500 companies like Dell and different ones like mm -hmm. that. This is mom and pop type yeah. situation. And it's crazy for to think about <clears throat> American businesses taking loans out to pay their taxes. I know, exactly. <laughs> that is, that's mind-blowing to me to think about American businesses having to, like I said, actually take more loans out just to pay their own taxes because of a bill like yeah. this. But interest rates today. Yeah. You know, for, for a small business owner, they're not at historically low. Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen the inflate quite a bit mm -hmm. in the last couple of years, not to get off into another co topic. Mm -hmm. But so now they're having to go out here and borrow money at very expensive rates mm -hmm. to pay Uncle Sam because you don't want to owe Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam has probably the highest rates out there, and it's actually gone up here. Um, that would be another topic we'll have sometime in the yeah. future. But uh, that all being said, you don't want to owe Uncle Sam. It's better to go borrow. But who wants to go in debt? For three hundred thousand dollars, if you can even get it. Now that's the other thing too. And and you might have to do it again next year. Exactly, because <laughs> no. it, because they're under software. Yes, you are mandated. Yep. To amortize it under the under the current law. So now we've told you the bad news. Let's talk about the good news. So mm -hmm. this being fixed now. We're doing this recording here. What is this? Uh, March the twentieth. Twentieth. Yeah, March the twentieth. Twenty first. Twenty first. Twenty first. Twenty first. One day behind. So March twenty first, and uh, the Senate actually goes on recess on Monday the twenty fifth for a two week break, and return back on April the eighth. Mm -hmm. Everything that I am getting from Washington D.C. Ryan is saying they want to have this done by before April fifteenth, and the biggest reason why is the child tax credit. Yes. Even though the small business owners need it just as much. Mm -hmm. The reality is that there's there's a strong consensus that this is going to pass, even even to the point that Chuck Schumer, who is the uh, over the Senate, he says that even without these fixes, he feels like he can get the 60 votes. Absolutely, yeah. Um, uh, one of the articles I was reading the other day talked about how they are, the um, Democrats are willing to put this to the floor with zero changes in it yep. um, to get it to 60 votes so that they can go ahead and pass that. Um, and, and really, truly, if we look at this, um, so last year we were in a different place. There was no bill out there. There was nothing in place. The What should have been voted on and what they called a uh, common sense bill yeah. 
got disregarded <laughs> and they left it. And then it was like, everybody was like, oops, we, we forgot about it. And so last year there was like, there was no, we had no direction this year. The big difference is, is all roads are leading to correction. Mm -hmm. Just not, it's not a matter of if, but when. Exactly. And, uh, you know, with how much people are uh, wanting to shove into the bill at the last minute and, and, or take out or adjust. And I know the Democrats, like I said, are wanting to kind of go ahead and push this bill up um, with zero changes in it just so it can get passed as well. So all roads are leading towards uh, correction and to being able to file this, which also um, brings into a, another thing about filing 2022. Yeah, yeah, because the good news is this legislation is not just for 23, as you would generally think. It's mm -hmm. going to go back to 22 retroactively, both issues. Number one is the research and development tax credit amortization issue that we just talked about, which means that you don't have to amortize it over five years. You get to take all the expenses in the year that you incurred them. So example, the one I gave you earlier, all million dollars is going to be able to be deducted. So he doesn't, you know, now he's going to get a big refund back from the IRS, hopefully mm -hmm. um, quicker. You know, the IRS is not as quick to give back money, to be honest with you. Yeah. But that's, <laughs> quick to take it, slow to give it back. That's right. That's right. So, yep. you know, the, the, the good news is it is retroactive, but that creates an issue for all of our uh, clients out there because we have thousands <laughs> of clients out there. And so, because uh, the 22, many of you who are watching today uh, may have not taken your R&D because of what we just talked about, because of the potential of higher taxes. Yeah. Um, some did and some did not. And so we want to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to get this money as quickly as possible. So we, we have some things we have to consider. We've talked to our accounting <coughs> team and yeah. and uh, what's the expected there. So Absolutely. So so typically, um, you know, our standard processing is that when we we find these credits, you know, we can begin processing them. And like Don was saying, uh, last year with just everything and the implementations that happened with the, the, the bill and amortization schedule, we could not process. Some of the clients just, we didn't process them. They didn't want to move forward with it. And so what that did was, is it put everything on a pause. And this yep. isn't just our firm, but this is firms across the, the nation. And uh, what's happening now is, is as this bill is preparing to be voted on, again, this is not um, if, but when, basically, um, all these firms, including our own, are going to have a tidal wave of 2022 amendments that are going to have to go and be processed and then be submitted to the IRS. And you're talking about a, a big wave yes, that's coming in. A, a tsunami. Yeah, a tsunami, really. Yeah. It's going to be a flood. I know in our firm alone, um, it's going to be a, a massive amount of work for our team. So yeah. I hope they're up for it. <laughs> yeah, so we have this picture of all these 22 returns, you know, and when you think about there's, you know, six, seven, eight hundred, nine hundred, maybe a thousand mm -hmm. uh, returns that we're going to have to file. Yep. Um, we want to encourage everybody who's watching this today that making sure that you get in the queue because this process needs to start now yes. versus waiting until, yeah. you know, April 15th or whenever yeah. they, they pass this because the issue is we, it takes time to go back and to do all these amendments because we have to amend the 22s. 23s, I'll talk about that in a second, but the 22s, we have to go back and amend all these returns, either we do or your CPA does. And so that takes a lot of time to do that, especially when you have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of clients because now that becomes thousands and thousands of tax returns. It does. And and on top of that, we, we have talked about this in episode one, mm -hmm. um, but you know, it takes for the IRS to process an amended return yeah. six to 12 months yeah. is, is what it can, you know, and there's random outliers there, but typically it's six to 12 months for them to process. So if you take that into consideration on top of all the returns that are going to be getting ready to be processed, it's going to take a significant amount of time. And if you don't get ahead of it, it might delay it even further. Yeah, because everything's time stamped at the IRS. So first mm -hmm. in, first out. Yes. Generally. Uh, <laughs> when I say generally, the first in is, is everything's time stamped, is, is how quickly they get on the outside. That's always the question in mind. So um, the, the big thing here is to know that you know, the sooner you get into the queue with us mm -hmm. to start that process, and what we need is a copy of your 22 returns if we don't already have them, both corporate and personal, so we can have our team go ahead and start in that preparation. And so by the time they sign this thing off, you're ready to sign your, your documents, your, your tax returns, your amended returns, and we can electronically file them. And Ryan, I mean, it's pretty exciting to see the improvement we've seen with the IRS with electronic filing. Absolutely. Yeah. With electronic filing, uh, times have been cut down pretty significantly. Yeah. I believe what were we at 
160 some days for some of yeah, them. Yeah, 187, 187 days is the days. average. Yeah, is the and average. Uh, but we've seen them get as quickly as 30 days yeah. and 90 days. And yeah. so again, you know, it's, it's it's first in, first out with us as well because our accounting team works based upon. Uh, when the, the work comes in. Mm -hmm. And so we're actually hiring some more uh, in our accounting team to be able to address this here because we want to make sure we do this in a very timely manner because the sooner we can get them completed, your signature, your filing, the sooner you get your money back. So what happens, um, this is a scenario I was just thinking about, but what happens, Don, when a client, uh, let's say their CPA just did not want to file, um, you know, they, they wanted to file everything like last year. They, wanted, they didn't want to wait. They didn't uh -huh. want to amend their returns. What happens? Can can a client go redo their return? Yeah, and great get question. The, how does that work? Yeah. So if you went ahead and took uh, and did the amortization, which mm -hmm. we did have clients who mm -hmm. did that, and that, that's certainly fine, the good news you're going to get a refund back. Mm -hmm. But the key here goes back to the same thing. We have to do the amended return to be able to request that refund back. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, they will be getting a refund back on what their overpayment. What they overpaid. They overpaid yeah. Overpaid so on. the extra taxes that you paid because you weren't able to expense everything, mm -hmm. you paid taxes on that. Whether that was on fifty thousand or five hundred thousand, uh, the uh, the reality is you overpaid on taxes. So whatever that your tax rate is, that's what you're going to get back as a refund. Awesome. Yeah. So it's not lost. So no. It's, yeah. It's it, not lost. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's awesome. Even and, though you might think it sometimes when it goes to the IRS. Absolutely. Now twenty threes. So yeah. <clears throat> let's talk about twenty threes really quick. So. Um, you know, a lot of people love to file on time, yep. you know, I mean, one of our things here is if you like to file on time, that's great. We love extensions as yep. well. It just helps you have a little bit more cushion if you need to correct things, or if you need to file for R and D, it gives you that three year, a little extra time if you mm -hmm. have a statute of limitations. Um, so with this vote that's coming, we want it to be voted on before the tax season, but would sure. you prefer, or what would, what would be your recommendation on clients filing extensions yeah. or filing on time? What'd so this is a, co a topic that comes up every year. Mm -hmm. So, and I get it. Uh, I've owned three CPA firms. I understand the value of going ahead. Let's go ahead and get the returns done so mm -hmm. that we, as a CPA firm, you can say, okay, I'm done, you know, for the year. Yeah. Because, you know, from January 15th to April 15th, it's just crazy. And so I, I get all that. Um, but if you, if your CPA insists upon it, or if you insist upon it, because we have a lot of clients who like just to get it done and get it out of the way and not have to think about it again. Uh, if that's the case, that's okay. Go ahead and file, but you need to file an extension in addition to that because what that does, something that happened here a few years ago with the IRS, they allow what they call a superseding return. Mm. But to, and, what, and I'll explain what that is in a second, but to be able to do a superseding return, you've got to file an extension because that still gives you a six-month window to correct a already filed tax return without having to amend the return. Mm. So, uh, doing a superseding is much more beneficial time-wise than having to go back into amend, as we just talked about, like we're having to do with the 22s. So when you do a, um, when you file your taxes and you do that amended, pardon me, the, uh, the extension, what that does, that just says, okay, I get six months extra mm -hmm. to make this correction. So let's say, as an example, uh, that they vote on this here April the 14th and they pass it. Well, that doesn't give you a whole lot of time. But the law is in place, and they're again, they're making it retroactive for 22, 23 for the R&D. Uh, and the reality is there's no way your CPA is going to be able to get all that completed in that amount of time. So by having that uh, extension filed, then you're going to have till October 15th. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sure your CPA want to be diligent about going ahead and getting it done in the next month or two. Uh, after they take, what they generally want to do is take a vacation after April 15th <laughs> and then circle back sometime in mid-May and then start back up again or maybe June. That's generally what I see out there. So, But if you don't do the extension, you'll have to do an amendment. And mm -hmm. the amendment is always going to be more expensive if you have your CPA do it. And it's going to take more time to get the money. Yeah. So if I was a business owner, I'd do the extension. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and there's nothing wrong with it. There's no penalty. You don't have to pay a fee or anything like that there. It's just letting the IRS say, listen, you know what? We filed a return, but we want to have that opportunity to go and make a correction if there needs something to be done. Now, I want to come back to something you brought up, mm -hmm. a, a term, SOL. Mm -hmm. 
Explain what that means, Ryan. Well, and like we said in episode one, it's not what you think it means. Well, it can mean, it can mean that. SOL can mean what you think it means. Yeah. But uh, it means statute of limitations, meaning that you have a three-year period um, from the time that you filed your tax returns to be able to submit for your research and development credit. Otherwise, if you don't get it in by that date that you filed three years ago, you lose it on that credit forever, yeah. and it's gone. Um, it's amazing to me how every year – Despite being warned and told, we have clients every year that um, they just they drag their feet on getting their yeah. stuff in, and hundreds of thousands of dollars get lost, lost every yeah. single year. And guess who keeps, keeps that? Yeah, Uncle Sam. Yep. You're not getting it back. You're never you're never going to see that again. The best you can do is just be more diligent next year. Essentially, yeah. is what you can do with that. Now, something was unique back in 2020. So uh, mm -hmm. the issue to keep in mind here is that. Um, when you filed your taxes in 2020 um, for 2019, they, the IRS said you had till July. July. But remember, in 21, there was no extension. So if you filed it on time on April 15th, or we have one right now, actually, and one of the things we like to do is, is pull an 8821, which mm -hmm. is a transcript, because a lot of people, I, don't, I can't tell you when I filed my taxes mm -hmm. three years ago, most CPAs can't. They give you the, the tax return that says when they complete it. So I'll give you an example. This client that I was talking to the other day, Ryan, um, I had a conversation with him. I said, hey, uh, when do you generally file? He said, generally on time. So I pulled his return. His return was given to him on March the 14th. We pulled the transcript, mm -hmm. and he filed it on April the 4th. Oh, wow. So in his <clears> mind, <throat> mm -hmm. you know, um, he was thinking April 15th. His tax return was saying March the 14th, mm -hmm. but the reality is it was the 1st of April. So we know his statute of limitations has to be mm -hmm. filed. It has to, and we FedEx everything out if we don't electronically file. But if, uh, the reason, let me back up. The reason we can't electronically file because of 2020. The IRS only allows us to go back to 21 to electronically file. The last two years, right? Yeah, the last, last two, years. two years. So 21, 22, uh, we're able to file. And then, of course, 23 is just is what you're filing currently. And so in his case, we will FedEx it out. But it has to be out and, and has to be stamped as it's been going out on time. Because if not, he forfeits that, that credit, which yeah. in the, his case is about $10,000. Yeah. And, and again, it's amazing just every year how many people just forfeit it. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, it, regardless, like I said, it, it's money that you could not get back any other way. Yep. You can't tax plan for it. You can't do anything else. You can't expense it away. You, you literally are losing that money if you don't, yeah. don't get it. And it's money that you worked hard for. Um, and but, everybody feels like they're overpaying on taxes. Yeah. I mean, very few people I've ever come across, to be mm -hmm. honest with you, feel like you're paying too little taxes mm -hmm. unless they don't pay any at all. And of course, that's a whole nother conversation. But most people feel like they're overpaying, even though, and I, again, this is a whole other topic, if we look at history, we're actually at historically low tax rates. But when you think of 30, 40, 50% of your income going to Uncle Sam, whether that's federal and state or, or federal, um, that's a, a pretty big chunk of change when you think about it. And everything's gone up. We have an inflation of 10% and so on and so forth. So it's just kind of a, a, un, a, 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 some people say a perfect storm, but it's actually an unperfect storm if you're trying to make ends meet. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and like we were saying at the beginning of, of the show, we have, you know, it's, it's unprecedented times right now. Inflation's high. Everything seems to be up. Um, if, you know, depending on what state you are, you have the sales tax, you get taxed at the pump, you get taxed everywhere else. Property tax. And so yeah. why would you want to continue to let Uncle Sam continue to reach into your pocket and take yeah. that money uh, when you're already being taxed to death anyway, yeah. you know? Um, well, you know, the thing about it, Ryan, is um, when you think about what you could do with that, you know, mm -hmm. maybe it is put in savings, which is not a bad idea, you know, mm -hmm. to help curb a little bit of the inflation issue. But maybe it's taking a vacation you've not taken in a long time. Maybe it's paying down debt. You know, we just started this new program for all of our staff here mm -hmm. called um, Every Dollar, Smart Dollar. Smart Dollar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, it, you know, being able to, to get that debt paid off so mm -hmm. you're not having to deal with all that. So there's a lot of uh, neat things. But unfortunately, like you said earlier, if you miss that deadline and, or if you don't file for the R&D and Uncle Sam gets to hold that money, you know, whether you agree or disagree with how our government spends money, it's gone. Because if you miss that, that SOL date, the statute of limitations, that money becomes Uncle Sam's and it's legally his and he's not going to give it back. Yeah, absolutely. So just to kind of like re go over what we kind of talked yeah. about, um, the big thing here is with this uh, tax bill, the Tax Relief in Amer for American Families and Workers Act, all roads are kind of leading back towards correction, Correct. which is good. 
we need it. American families need it. American businesses need it. Um, we're just kind of waiting on that when date, yeah. you know, when, when not if, but when date. And when that happens, we're really, you know, not just us, but every R and D firm across the nation is going to be Johnny bar the door. Yep. Here comes 2022 amendments. Here yeah. comes everything else. And so it's really important that we really get everybody on board and in the queue as soon as possible so that we can begin processing these. So when the doors open, it can, we can, Shove everybody through, essentially. Well, yeah, and you got to keep in mind, too, that everybody's currently filing their 23 taxes. Yeah. So you have all that influx of stuff that's coming into the IRS already. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, now everybody's making a run for the door to get their money back on their 22s. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have unprecedented amended returns across the board. That's a lot of activity. That is a lot of activity. Yeah. And I know the IRS just hired a bunch of uh, people, and I can tell you we deal with them on a daily basis. We have a, a whole team here that that's all they do is contact the IRS. Not all of them have the um, experience and knowledge level, mm -hmm. uh, and so we're seeing uh, some delays just because you know the right hand doesn't know what the left hand's doing. Yeah, it, not to go off on another topic, but that is kind of funny. <laughs> We'll have uh, our, one of our um, advocacy agents call you know, on the IRS and call for a, one client, get one agent who uh, knows nothing, um, while you call a few minutes later to another agent and they have the whole thing figured out. Yeah. It's, just, it's just, it's amazing. It's yeah. amazing. That's why we also have that service is so that you don't have to do that because you, as a business owner, are already wearing seven hats, 10 hats, maybe, yeah. maybe more. And for you to call the IRS, wait on the phone for a couple hours, you don't have time for that. Yeah. And then on top of that, um, let's say you get that agent who doesn't know what they're talking about. You're probably going to take them at their word because you just waited on the phone for them for an hour or two hours. And they're going to say, I don't know. I can't see anything. It's not here, blah, blah, blah. And you're probably not going to waste two more hours of your time yeah. to see that. You're going to go into panic mode where we've heard that before. And we so, know what questions to ask. And we know what questions to ask. And so we'll hop back on the phone with another agent. We'll get a hold of them and we'll see what they say and see if it mesh, meshes up with what yeah, the first and, one and says. And we dig down deeper. We know what questions to ask them to say, okay, you, you know, you're looking at this here. Mm -hmm. And again, for all of our clients, we pull an 8821, Ryan. And mm -hmm. so that allows us, it doesn't give us any other authorization other than to electronically see what's going on. And we get alerts to say, okay, the amendment's been received, uh, or the check's going out, where the case is. So, you know, that's again more of being able to save you a bunch of frustration and keep you in the know is by having the service. And then, of course, our service that we have for our uh, tax advocacy team is so that you, whereas you will call someone, you know, mm -hmm. a, a phone call to the IRS, you're going to wait on there a couple hours. You may get a courtesy drop too, mm -hmm. which means they just you drop get, you. Yeah, drop <laughs> you, start all over again, go yeah. to the back of the line. Uh, but we actually, pay for a service that allows our advocacy team to go uh, quickly to the front. Mm -hmm. And so, and there's a uh, one just for providers like ourselves that specifically. So we don't spend hours um, trying to get through. Sometimes, occasionally it might take 20, 30 minutes, but generally we get on there uh, relatively quick. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's just one of the things, like I said, that's one of the things we do to take care of you yeah. as the client. Um, whenever you come on, do one of our services like that, uh, where it's provided for you within the outlines of our service so exactly. we take care of that for you as well yeah. so yeah full service full service yep. awesome so. right anything else you think that uh, our uh, watchers and listeners need to hear about no uh just again get your stuff in as soon as possible you'll probably be having um if you're already a client of ours you probably have one of our agents reach out um and just start collecting your 2022s um again we're going to be wanting to process this as quickly as possible um so if you haven't heard from us go ahead and reach out to us let us know that you're good to move forward we're going to go ahead and begin processing again we we can't stress enough how much activity is about to come down the pipeline. So definitely get that stuff in. But other than that, that's... Yeah. So look, can I throw out one sure. more thing? Yeah. Here? So what happens if somebody's watching this and they've mm -hmm. never had a study completed? Yeah. Absolutely. Kind of walk them through what the qualification is, Ryan. And, you know, we work with a lot of different professionals mm -hmm. out there in some businesses. We have a very strong um, focus towards the, the medical space. Yeah. Uh, but so kind of give them some of the basics are when it comes to, uh, you know, to, that we have a, a minimum that to uh, go sure. through this process and then kind of walk them through what we need to collect up and things like that. Absolutely. <clears throat> so uh, we do work a lot with the medical space with the R&D. So if you're in the medical sector, um, one of the qualifications that we have is um, it's, a lot, it's heavily based on payroll. Your payroll is a really good indicator 
of uh, what type of credit that you're going to have because you typically do not have supply costs like a manufacturer would who would also qualify for this credit. So we, we base a lot of what we have off of your payroll. Um, so usually a minimum entry point for us is that you have to have a payroll about $200,000 or, or up if you have that. Um, and then once you're there, it's about your qualified activity of the things that you're doing. So inside of your medical practice, are you doing um, evaluations of patients? Are you doing re-evaluations of patients? Are you trying to improve patient outcome by in including uh, new technology, new instruments, uh, new things into your practice, new procedures into your practice? It's going to improve the potential. It doesn't have to improve, but the potential of patient outcome. If you're doing some of those things, um, then there's a good chance that you qualify. Or your staff. Yeah, and their staff. Yeah, yeah. and you're, if you or your staff, great point yeah. think, uh, for that or doing any of those things, and you could potentially qualify for the R&D. Yeah. So if so. you never have taken advantage of that, then reach out to us, go to our website, quartermastertax.com, click on there to schedule just a 15, 20-minute complimentary mm -hmm. consultation. We don't charge uh, for us to do the assessment. Mm -hmm. um, if you uh, have that phone call with us and we determine that you have the minimum requirements in place, then what's the next steps, Ryan? Yeah, so from there, we uh, gather up some documentation, some required documentation. So um, in order for us to complete the study, we'll need your last seven years of W-2s and 1099s. If you have a payroll company, you can typically reach out to them to get those. Um, or, or a CPA. Or, or your CPA, yeah. absolutely. You can grab those from your CPA, and then they will be able to process those. Once we have those, there's some other documentation that we need, but really up front, that's all we're going to need to start. Uh, we'll be able to take you into the study at that point, and then from there, we'll be able to. Uh, you'll have a call with one of our tax study specialists, who is actually a former industry doctor, who uh, basically we call our um, industry specialist. And what he does is he'll take you through the tax study. He'll walk you through. He's been in your. Uh, he was a doctor for thirty years uh, in the medical space for thirty years. He understands your language. He understands um, all the ins and outs of the business, and so he can typically walk you through the credit and help you get as maximum amount of credit as possible. From that end of that study that's there, we'll be able to present to you what type of credit that we found, and then we'll be able to yeah. file and go from there. Yeah. So. so I always like to use that example. So what we're looking at is see what you're doing Monday through Friday that would mm -hmm. qualify. Because a lot of doctors, Ryan, I mean, they don't think they do. They're not doing any formal research or any academic type mm -hmm. of studies. And so they really kind of disqualify themselves mentally, even though uh, that's not the case. And then, of course, we have the occasional CPA who pops up and say, well, you know, doctors or chiropractors or uh, anesthesiologists, you don't qualify. Well, I would beg to differ. We have two tax attorneys uh, mm -hmm. come from KPMG uh, that actually could do the study as well. Absolutely. In some cases, depending upon what type of industry you're in. But uh, we have done the full due diligence to make sure that uh, all of our clients do meet that. Uh, and last thing I would just say, when we do file, um, the question comes up, and I'm kind of rehashing a little bit what we talked <coughs> last time, but what's the chances of audit, Ryan? Yeah, great question. So, um, yeah, this is one of the most talked about things is, okay, so if I do this and I'm in my returns, um, what type of red flags is this going to pop up? The, the amazing thing with R&D, uh, we mentioned this on episode one, but it's the fact that it comes with what we call a CFR report or a claim for refund report. That claim for refund report is essentially pre-auditing the credit up front where we, have, we as the company have to provide this study justifying where and why you qualify for the R&D credit and for what years that we're going after. And then from there, an IRS agent reviews it and then they have to approve it. So it's pre-approved up front, and this has been in the play since uh, January 10th of 2022. Correct. And uh, what happens is, is if it's pre-approved, uh, which is already a small, uh, the credit itself has always been low for audits, but it drops it even more. Uh, we like to say 99%. You can never really say 0%, right. but it, as low as you can pretty much get with this, right. it drops it because it's pre-approved on the front end rather than the back end. Yeah. Usually where the issue comes in is whenever you submit something, the money's been given out, the IRS in that statute of limitations that they have is going, oh, wait, you didn't get that, or we need more information on that. Now it's all done on the front end. So uh, once it's approved, it's pretty much uh, smooth sailing to the checks come yeah. to your doorstep. So Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I was on a conversation with uh, Jason, our head tax attorney, and another attorney uh, relationship that we have, and we were kind of talking through, you know, why they did this here in January of 22 is because they didn't have the staff to be able to go back and check this stuff. It was just kind of a blanket approval up front, and then they would go back and select, you know, randomly select. And it was still, again, it's a very small percentage. But so what they did is they changed us to this pre-approval process. And in our conversations that Jason and I were having with Ben was, so how are they able to, because uh, they only have 45 days mm -hmm. to say yes or no. And we've submitted thousands of these <clears> here <throat> and all have been approved. 
how are they able to do that you know with the manpower well as as jason explained that they use ai technology and they're you know they're they're allowing that that's that um software the technology to be able to uh, read that and make sure it meets the four-part test and everything else that goes in there and they're pretty lengthy i mean we have to explain who did what uh when they did it and how they did it um type of situation how much time they spent and so that information is, is looked at and then I'm, I'm, as jason said then there'd be a supervisor who reviews over that as well but they have 45 days and then the comment comes up well if it takes me three or six months to get my re my refund back mm -hmm. why well, what we're hearing from the IRS is they just haven't gotten to it yet. So mm -hmm. when they finally get to it and they review it, the, the agent or the AI reviews it, then that's when they cut the check. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, I think we've pr pretty much have uh, beat this horse and, and talked a little bit about it. Just again, a recap. Uh, it's not about if, it's just when. And make sure that you get in the queue. Contact us immediately. If, again, whether you're an existing client, make sure that you get in the queue as quickly as possible. If you're not an existing client, make sure you reach out to one of our team members. And we look forward to uh, getting you back tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars each and every year. Again, thank you for tuning in this week here. Until our next episode, uh, have a great day. Bye-bye. <music>